All right. So this is going to be kind of a uh, a little quick trip through uh, essentially the roll and tip method of finishing, which is applicable to uh, it's applicable to varnish and it's applicable to, to paint. So um, the first thing that I always try to talk about is prep. If you're painting, uh, you can you can prep. You know, you, you end up with holes when you build a boat, and you got to fill those. And this, I'll just pass that around, is several different types of of filling material. You don't have to, you know. You don't have to use marine fillers if your boat's not going to sit in the water the whole time. Uh, if it if it's a trailer queen, uh, no big deal. Um, but that shows a couple of common hardware store fillers plus quick fare, which is what's being used here. So you can kind of get the sense of of uh, how it comes out, because that thing had a lot of holes in it. <coughs> Mark, cost-wise, does it make sense? If you don't have only the remaining holes, it gets pretty expensive if you have to buy the quick fare in large quantities. Uh, you, you don't, and we've got a small supply mm -hmm. of quick fare here. So, you know, it's a simple two-to-one mix. Use all your, your normal, epoxy precautions because it is an epoxy product um, and uh, you know, have at it you know if you have just a few to build I mean I uh, This is two coats standing between and then this is two coats sanded and then the surface prep for the paint on this was Sanded to 120. So, so this is just like real simple. Just 120. Yes, the top coat. The top coat. So what is it? 
the time you get sick of sanding the third or fourth time you probably sand it up. But what we're going to do today is well, I'll just do a little demo on this scrap. And this is 120. This has got uh, two coats of primer, well, well cured. Um, I thought I was going to do this a couple weeks ago, but I didn't. How, so, how long would you let cure that kills? As long as you have. <laughs> Basically, if, if you have, if you're going to, if you're going to prime with kills, uh, um, then, then, uh, I would give it at least a week. It's a, it's a water-based primer. So it's, it's latex. You need to, to let it fully cure so that it hardens. Now, if you've got a boat that's going to be in the water a lot, then I would highly recommend um, uh, System 3 has a product called Yacht Primer. That is a two-part epoxy water base, easy cleanup, really nice stuff. Um, expensive, but worth worth the, the money. Boat building is expensive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, just ask if if you've got an area like on my boat, motor well, and I've sealed it with uh, that silver tip. Uh -huh. Should I still put two coats of primer on that? Yeah. Like, yeah. Before I put regular primer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, the, the, the nice thing about the like it, the nice thing about most marine climbers is they uh, they operate as a barrier coat, so you can also bottom paint it right over the top of them. And um, but they're a little bit better at, at keeping moisture out, and so it's always a good idea. And so, we're just going to give this guy a good rub. And What is the ultimate purpose of sanding other than for the smooth finish in between the layers? The primary, you, you want to give the surface a little bit of tooth. Two. And um, the other thing is, is you will, no matter how you apply it, brush it, if you roll it, if you roll and tip your your primer, um, you will end up with surface irregularities. Those will carry through to the finish coat. And so 
anytime you can take those surface irregularities out, it's a good idea. Especially if you're working in a dusty environment. Oh yeah. yeah. Then, <laughs> then then you end up with Which lots of wonderful <laughs> stuff. Yeah. 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 Okay. And gloves are always a good idea. <laughs> and we're going to use really expensive equipment here. Um, you know, you can you can you can pay seventy or eighty dollars for a for a brush, but then you have to clean it, and you never do a perfect job of it, um, or at least I don't. Uh, but this thing for 79 cents will give you, will give most of us better results than a bristle brush. Um, Water-based, you can clean them. You Use can them a couple clean of them. times. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot easier. Just squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Yeah. 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 Be careful about some. If you're using things like anti-fouling paint or uh, marine finishes, they will um, e even many epoxies will dissolve the foam. Okay. It looks like it's going well for a little while, and then you know it's oh, sort of oh. yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you know these these. Uh, these yellow foam rollers, they are formulated for use with epoxy. And we're using eighth inch today because it's what I had. And, but my preference is actually when using paint is for three sixteenths. Is that the map size? Or is it yeah, it's it the, the thickness, yeah. And in fact, what we got to do is and once again, these are, you know, the, the trick with these things is buy nine inch rollers and cut them on the bandsaw. Oh. Yeah. Is this the thicker one or the... That's just the thinner one. This is 18... 2 16 Oh. Yeah, 2 16 Hey, you know, they made them sizes like that. It's not a real number. Now, it's, it's always a good idea to mix your paint with a stick and make sure that you get all those solids up off the bottom. Do you have a trick for keeping it from skinning over when it kind of use the whole can? Um, this one has been stored since uh, uh, March of 2021. Jeez. And all I've done is sealed it up I've got maybe three quarters of this left. So I, all I've done is sealed it up and I've inverted the can to store it. Yeah. It's too late to invert all the cans I have that are already. <laughs> 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 yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. That's that's like, you might end up with multiple layers of that. <laughs> yeah. That would be great. <laughs> One thing is, seems to work is um, rather than buying that expensive stuff in the nitrogen uh -huh. propane. Yeah. If you yeah. have a propane torch, uh, take the tape off the air vents so that it doesn't mix air in. Just stick it in the can, run the propane in there. It's heavier than air, 
You put the lid on and there's no oxygen. Right. Oh. Yeah. 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 I've also used they they actually sell storage bags, and so you can put like your your varnish in storage bags. And because this is applicable to varnish, if we were doing if this was a varnish coat. A, it would not have primer. <laughs> uh, I, I've never tried that. <laughs> um, but I would, I would be straining the varnish through the, through one of these strainers uh, from the can into whatever, uh, whatever I was, I was using. You know, in whatever container I was working at. grain of this piece is a long. This is totally counterintuitive, but what you do is you roll across. If you were brushing, would you do it that way too? Instead of rolling? If you were brushing, you wouldn't He's doing rolling stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. I brush and then I and then I go back over it. Oh, yeah. With the very tip. Yeah. Of well, the the idea behind using the roller is what you're doing with the roller is you're applying this very relatively <coughs> thin, but um, very uniform. Coating. That's the whole point of rolling. Yeah. And so we just work this. And I guess the roller is actually pushing the paint into the surface instead of dragging it across. Yeah, and and then once we get to that point. And you can't encourage John. <laughs> <laughs> it only goes downhill. <laughs> okay, shut up. <laughs> okay. And and so then we just lightly tip this off. And what you've done is you've gotten rid of all of those. Uh, you've got rid of all the little, the little bubbles and things that are in the finish when you just roll it. And you'll see, like, I've picked up a little paint here. I'm not going to worry about it. It's first coat. And then when you come back to finish <coughs> this off, you're going to again sand it 120 150 in that range um, and then apply the second coat just like it and the beauty of this 
is that by the time that you get to your third coat, your third coat will be nearly perfect because you've had all this experience. <laughs> <laughs> Want to uh, comment on covering a large area where yes. you have to roll, tip, then roll, then tip, so forth. Yeah. Okay, so you you stake out a workable area, and if it's a if it's a big project like. For that thing, I'm gonna recruit people. <laughs> because I'm gonna recruit somebody to, to roll, and then I will come back and tip. Um, the, the, but if, if, if you have to break up the areas, then you always wanna work from dry to wet. So you would you would have this area, then I come over here and I roll out this next area just like I did that one. And then the tipping would carry back into this wet here. I'm dry, wet. And you just keep doing it. So how do you know if you if you if you've uh, done too large an area? and you have problems in the transition, you'll know. By <laughs> <laughs> then, it's too late. And, uh, right. But remember, you're going to sand that first area that you just screwed up. Yeah. And you're going to apply the, the next layer. Yeah. And, and it's going to be a smaller overlapping area. <laughs> yeah. You only have the drag marks. That's the That's how you, how you can tell it's worth yeah. it. You can actually feel the brush start to yeah. 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 So you'll figure it out and by the third coat. <laughs> right, and then the really nice thing about working with an Al-Qaeda enamel like this is you've got a lot of open time. Um, it, it, you really, it's, it's, I mean, I did this shelf, I, I basically did this coat um, all in one shot roll and tip by myself. Yeah. You just pick out these natural breaks. So, so you might roll this blank. Actually, you would start up here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you might, might roll this entire section down to here. And then you can tip it out from end to end. But with a lot of the polyurethanes, you don't have that much open time, right. especially as it gets warmer. Yep. Like today is a really nice painting day. Two things. Yep. So can you talk about your <coughs> preferred way of removing dust after you finish sanding before you coat? And then the second thing is you're, you've been focusing on painting over bare wood. You want to talk about prep if you're painting over epoxy. Okay, if, sure. Uh, uh, let's do the second one first. Painting over e epoxy. The key to it is to get an absolutely flat surface. And, uh, uh, duck hunters. <laughs> um, uh, 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 so what you want to do is you want to you want to sand out that epoxy again to give it some tube. And if if you have if for example you were going to sand this boat, you need to get that down to where you see no gloss and uh, uh, very often the the way that you do that is uh, green scotch brush, scotch brush, because there will be little hollows, and and you're never going to get all those out until you sand through the the epoxy. So that's one. 
picking up uh, picking up I like these synthetic back cloths, but ideally what you do is you, is you wipe it down with denatured alcohol first and pick up as much as you possibly can. Get everything out of the air that you possibly can and then come back with the back cloth. And these were a whole lot better than the than the ones with the wax in them because you never deposit anything onto your onto your finish that's going to destroy it. And once you know you get this thing all dirty and you throw it in the washing machine and it's ready to go again. So so that's just regular micro microfiber. Or whatever yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Right. And how do you know whether it has wax in it? Uh, the, the package um, <laughs> um, pack cloths are sticky, yeah. are sticky okay. and that's how they work. You know, yeah. because when you take it out and expand you know, it out, then you've got to go clean the hands. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, it all depends. Okay. It all depends on the level of finish that you're having. Um, on, yeah. I've gone as high as three point. Really? Yeah. For varnish, more than three. Yeah, for varnish. Okay. Primarily. But um, I rarely go beyond two forty. Okay. You know, the guy that taught me how to varnish. <clears throat> I had done it for many, many years. Was a, used a lot of Scotch Brite. And he always said, when you're Scotch Briting, if it ain't white, it ain't right. Yeah. And you got to just really get in there because you think, especially if you're working on varnish, you think, oh my gosh, I'm screwing up the finish here. But you know, you get that all the same uniform color and. Uh, so here's a varnish board, and so this is sanded to 240, and then a single coat here, and then two coats, three coats, three coats, four coats, four coats, five coats, six coats. <laughs> so this, this, this is, this over here, for varnish, is almost done. You <laughs> 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 did the varnish at all in some of those coats? Uh, only the first coat. And, you know, I like to go to 240 for the final coat of paint or varnish. And um, questions? Two, yeah, Mark. Two top coats? Mm -hmm. Is two top coats enough? Uh, two coats of the paint? Yeah. Sometimes. Okay. Um, uh, it, I think you could get. Consistently better results with you. Is that gloss or, or how do you This it? actually happens to be semi gloss. Semi gloss. Yeah. Do you ever use that, what is it called, flow trawl or something to make the paint? Oh, yeah. 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 I have, uh, yeah, I've used that for varnish. Uh, never for, I've never had to use it. And it and it's you know it it helps the it, it helps the paint or varnish flow more uniformly. Yeah. Um, but you've got to be really careful with how much you use. It says ten percent on the can. I don't know yeah. if that seems reasonable. Yeah. Probably <coughs> a little bit on the temperature, doesn't it? 
Yeah, yeah. Temperature and something. humidity. Oh, and, okay. and, and I am convinced that varnishing is a black art. <laughs> because, it, it, you know, you can have exactly the same conditions thus the, the next day and the varnish is acting differently. Yeah. And, and I monitor my shop for temperature and humidity. <coughs> Therefore, uh, a dust box is not going to do anything. No. But, it, no. I, but I'm if you, it, I set up a box fan, and so I'm accepting some, some dust in the air yeah. to, in order to get clean, yeah. clean, and, clean uh, and I mean, with, with this stuff, I really, you know, if you're in a space like this, I'm, I'm personally not worried about it. But oh, wow. everybody, everybody should wow, wow, wow. do what they do. Yeah. Yeah. what they feel comfortable with. Um, the toxicity, the, the, where the varnish came in, the, the, the breathing nasty you are, chemicals. Yeah, and, and especially if you're using two-part polyurethane, uh -huh. that stuff will kill you. Yeah. So um, you want to you wanna be real, real careful with that. Even, even with a beard, uh, I've got a three-inch right. respirator. You know, yeah. Oh, and if you can smell the paint, yeah, you'll have a cough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you, know, yeah. You, can, you can you can work all day in a closed space, and I you know finish finish a coat of, of um, <coughs> epoxy primer on my boat. You know, I take the mask off and it's on my gut. I got to get out of here now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I I had a little bit of exposed skin outside of my full space respirator and you know, Tyvek suit and everything once, which was two-part polyurethane. Uh -huh. And I had a, you know, it, it, it turned red. You know, I had a, I had a reaction to the, yeah. to the fumes. The whole top of your head is still red. Yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> so Mark, could you say a few words about sanding epoxy in respirators? Um, yes. Sanding epoxy, especially when it's green, is really nasty stuff. And so what I have found to be acceptable is we were donated a wonderful little machine just right around the corner that is a, uh, uh, a, a dust collector on a small scale. Um, and it is a best tool. Mm -hmm. And um, I connect that to my best tool sanders. And I mean, it all goes in there. That's a great way to, to sand epoxy. Um, Did you still it, wear a respirator or not? No, I don't. Um, the, uh, I mean, like when you get done sanding, like this stuff, which this was pure, so I really wasn't worried about it. But when I got done sanding this, this was clean. It doesn't leave any dust on. So, but it, if you're gonna if you're gonna sand uh, green epoxy, green is less than thirty day pure. Not use some sort of dust extraction, <coughs> you should definitely be wearing the rest. I think you can just use the particle filters when, because there are no volatiles left in the epoxy. But if you were actually, well, if you get the dust there, there, there are volatiles in the epoxy until it's a full cure, yeah. Yeah. it's less, but you know, it's. <coughs> it, it, that would also be a really good. Uh, 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 that'd be a really good demo. Is working with epoxy from a safety standpoint. Mm -hmm.
Right. Green, so green is less than 30 days. Yeah. 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 I thought it was more like a week. Yeah. But if you if you read the the most manufacturers uh, information, they'll tell you that a full cure is like thirty days. Yeah, you don't need to roll and you don't need to tip out the primer. Primer um, If you do, you get a better finish. Okay. <laughs> and, and and you don't have as much sand. Yeah, less sanding. Oh, less okay. sanding is always good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So, but like, I wouldn't hand sand primer unless it was a little piece like this. But what about scotch bright? If there's scotch bright in there, almost can you do that with a random rubber sander? Yeah, you can. Some of the manufacturers actually make discs mm -hmm. out of scotch brays, so or you can just stick it on the bottom. First time I machine sanded with scotch bright, I left it square. It was pretty. <laughs> 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 One tool you haven't mentioned that I use when I'm varnishing a boat is I use a flat file. Uh, like on that boat, you, you can see the high spots, and that flat file will take it down, and then you come come over with your sandy. But a, a mill bastard, you know, a fine cut, you you can the, the real high ones because if you're using something soft, mm -hmm. all you're doing is following the curves. Whereas a file, you, you'll knock knock down the high yeah. spots. That's the machinist trick. Yeah, yeah, I'm a machinist, and I think you will file. So most most people don't. The, yeah. the other yeah. thing is like like in 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 Tom's case there, he could have rolled and tipped his epoxy. Sure. Yep. And of course. And and saved him a, a lot, lot of, of sanding. Yeah. One thing I learned about uh, flying varnish uh, is that if you're, uh, well, the, the UV protection is dependent on the thickness of the slip film that you eventually wind up with. And if you're, if you're going crazy sanding between each coat, uh, it takes a long time to build up a meaningful thickness. Yeah. If you're applying a fresh coat of varnish within 24 hours, you're still going to get a chemical bond without having to sand the coat. So right. typically what I do is I will apply two, sometimes even three coats of varnish without sanding in between. Uh, depending on the varnish, you can do this either in one day or you can do it on consecutive days uh, and it'll tell you on the back of the can what you can recoat it in. So I'll, I'll put on two or three coats of varnish and then I'll sand it flat and do my wipe with alcohol yeah. and pack rag and then I'll put on another three coats right. and flatten <laughs> it and it speeds up the entire process. You yeah. wind up with a thicker film uh, and then of course before the final <coughs> coat I will always sand it and yeah. I won't do a three coat and then just have that as my final. Right. But, uh, right. Uh, it speeds the process up. It does, and it, that, that's a technique called hot coating. And and the key to hot coating, I, I learned, um, don't do your first hot coat at 7 a.m. Because if you really have that 24 hour Limitation. <laughs> what that means is the next hot coat the next day is at 5 a.m. 
<laughs> so I kind of tend to prefer to go to the afternoon. <laughs> but, but yes, that's a, that's a great reason to do it. It's, I hate standing. Yeah, me too. I mean, doesn't everybody? Is there anybody who likes standing? <laughs> I got a job. Really? <laughs> One thing, it depends on how much sanding you want to do. For an eight foot boat, I can prep it in, in like 25 to 40 minutes for the first prep lay my varnish, I can do it in 22 to 25 minutes. And the next time I'm doing like that, 20 minutes sanding. And by then you're tired, but you've also done enough yeah. like that. So the sanding doesn't go on for hour after hour after hour. Oh, yeah. yeah, and I use hand, I use hand just to follow the contours rather than yeah. power sander, because I hate the noise in the dust it produces. And so yeah. that's, that's another way. Yeah. Hand sanding it does have some advantages. Yeah, but when you've got big, Big flat oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, holy smokes! Yeah, that's a whole other story. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. Give me that power center. Yeah, give me that Rotex, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and just a counterpoint to you, I never hot coat. I want the thing to cure. I want to sand because I want the I want the tooth. So yeah, the next coat. The and so I only I only go three coats too. I will never go more than three coats. That's no. that's it for varnish. Really? Yeah. So, and so what you can see. So, 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 so this, this is Charlie. That's job, that's Charlie. And my job is over here. So I, I, mean, I call this I call this a workboat finish as opposed to a boat show finish. And so it depends on what your purpose are. If your purpose is simply to, to provide some uh, water barrier, and so it makes it easier to, to to wash the boat off of mud, workboat will get you there. But if you want to, if you want technique for the sake of technique or virtuoso. Well, then you go crazy with 10, 12 coats, yeah. But if you want to finish that coat, which is epoxy, there is there is absolutely zero UV protection in epoxy. That's right. In order to get in order to get good UV protection for that coat, he needs to apply seven, eight, nine coats. But if the water. boat is always stored dry in a sheltered thing, used a couple times a year for a couple hours, you don't yeah. need UV protection. If you're okay. sailing in the Caribbean, then you need yeah. UV protection. Yeah, yeah. And so it depends on the purpose. Do you want to spend your time sanding and painting or do you want to spend your time in the water rowing and fishing? <laughs> yeah, you're, you're your epoxy will be a kind of an opaque yellow white color. Yep. After uh, very quick. A few okay. weeks in the sun, and, yeah. and there's nothing that can be done other than, than sanding it all off and doing it again. Right. Yeah. yeah. Because from there it goes, it goes chalky, kind of like the color of your shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then it starts disappearing. <laughs> yeah. 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 So anyway, that's all I got. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Mark. I find that guy that likes sanding. Would you send him over to my garage? <laughs> <laughs>